Okay, in this video we're going to talk about bone, joint, and muscle injuries. So this is a, again, it's not a very long chapter, but there is a lot to it. So bone, joint, and muscle injuries. If you've taken another first aid class, they may have referred to it as musculoskeletal, um, but we're going to talk about um, specifically bone, joint, and muscle injuries. So this would be chapter 14, if you're following along in your book. And again, I'm not going to cover everything in the chapter, so I'm just going to highlight some of the largest areas, some of the most important that you're more likely to encounter. So we're going to talk about fracture. So a fracture of a bone, or essentially just a broken bone, and we're going to talk about open and closed fractures. So let's talk about closed first. So closed fracture, the skin is intact. So skin is intact. So it hasn't broken through. Essentially the bone hasn't broken through the skin. There's no wound. but the bone is broken in some way. And there's a lot of different types of fractures. Um, probably don't have time to go into all of them. So, and then you have an open fracture. So these are, right now we're just talking about how it relates to what's happening at the skin level. There are different types of fractures like spiral fractures and so forth. Um, we may or may not have time to, to go over them in this chapter. But an open fracture, the, the skin's broken. So the bone ha may be um, protruding through, and the bone may be visible. But it doesn't have to be visible. Just as long as the skin's broken open, that's considered an open fracture. So let's go down to care. So to care for this, um, it's not always life-threatening. You don't always have to call 911. You definitely want to seek medical help. You want to remove the clothing. If there's clothing covering that part of the body, you want to remove that. If you're, if they have like a pair of pants on or something, you can just cut them along the seam to get to the injury site. You want to examine. So you want to examine the injury and you're going to look for deformity. A lot of times you can compare one limb to another so you can have the person hold it out. So let's say this is somebody's arm here and have them compare it to the other arm. <laughs> I know that's a little exaggerated but you can always compare them and see if they look uniform and I know people aren't perfectly proportional but it, it it is a good way to, to see deformity because sometimes you'll look at a limb and it looks okay, but when you compare it to the other one, you're like, oh, okay, I see what's wrong here. Uh, you can also feel the area, so you can um, feel the area to see I exactly where you know the deformity occurs. Sometimes it's hard to see visually, but by feeling it, and you want to be careful when you feel, um, you can feel where the damage has occurred. So you also want to check for blood flow, check the nerves, see if they've got filling. So um, sometimes during breaks, the, the bone can actually cause damage to um, blood flow by either pin pinching off the vessel or by uh, completing completely cutting it. A lot of times if that happens, you're going to see a lot of bruising at the site because of the internal bleeding. Sometimes you may also see like a little hematoma develop as a result. But you want to check for blood flow, nerves, so you would use CMS here. And here's another one of those acronyms. Sometimes these get overwhelming. So that stands for circulation. So you want to check for circulation. That should be an A. Sensation. Oops. Sensation. Let me undo that real quick because I misspelled it. So sensation. 
and movement. So when you're checking, you'll check for circulation, sensation, movement. And when you're carrying, you want to, if you're going to move the person, you want to stabilize them. You want to stabilize that limb. And that's only if you're going to move them or if EMS is going to be delayed. Because if EMS arrives, they're going to have their own splints essentially. You know, it's a more advanced splint that it's easy for them to put it on. They're just going to take the one that you put on off most likely. So if you know EMS is going to be there shortly, you don't even want to bother, bother trying to stabilize because um, there's always the potential for injury even when you're trying to stabilize because they may move that limb around. So if you can just have them hold it in place or you can hold it without them moving around, you can wait till EMS arrives. If it's open, so if this is some sort of open fracture, you'll want to cover the area. So you want to cover up the area that's exposed and, and stabilize it, of course. I mean, it goes right along with stabilization um, of the limb. You want to cover, cover and sta stabilize. Sorry, I can't talk. And um, the main reason you're covering the open area is you don't want to get dirt in there. You don't want any kind of effect infection to start. And you want to apply ice, not directly on the wound itself if it's open. This goes for co closed and open. You want to apply ice to help reduce the swelling and get medical help. But when you're applying the ice, don't put it right on the wound itself if it's an opened fracture. So let's talk a little bit about dislocations. So we have a dislocation and essentially what's happened is the joint has come apart. So the joint has separated. Separated. I know that's hard to read. Let me just cross that out and draw it again. It's really hard to write with this pen. My handwriting's bad, but it's not this bad. It's being aggravated by this pen. So you have dislocation, the joints come apart. So inside of a joint, just real quick, let's say this is the femur here. Here's the tibia. Both of these are weight-bearing bones, and what I mean by that is you also have the fibula over here on the side where muscles are just attached right next to the tibia. It's not a weight-bearing bone. You could break this bone and still walk, but if you break the tibia, you're not going to be walking. So, And that's a real common injury is what's called a tib-fib injury where both of them are broken. If the tibia breaks, it's really thick bone. If it breaks, you're not going to walk. So you have ligaments attaching the bone to bone essentially ACL PCL in here um, I won't go over all the different ligaments and you have a joint capsule but what can happen at a joint is this can pop out of place and so the the, the bones are no longer close to to it and you also have articular cartilage that articular cartilage is kind of like Teflon so if the bony surfaces come in contact too much um, there won't be as much friction, but if you get any kind of trash in here, it can create friction and destroy the joint. You also have synovial fluid that acts kind of like oil that lubricates the joint. We'll get to that later. Anyway, dislocation. Um, the joint comes apart. So again, CMS, or CSM, sorry, um, circulation, um, circulation sensation and movement. movement is what you're checking for. Also rest would apply so rest, ice, compress, elevate especially for a dislocation. Splint to stabilize a joint. Don't reduce yourself if you don't know what reducing is, um, that'd be trying to pop the joint back in place. You're not supposed to do that yourself. It's tempting, but don't do it. And then call for medical attention or go get medical help and let them reduce or trained 
in popping joints back into place and you're less likely to to do damage to blood vessels and nerves because if you do it yourself there's a possibility you could do more damage um, than when it just popped out of place then you have sprains and people get sprains and strains confused all the time so sprains you've twisted or somehow stretched the joint outside its normal range of motion so let's say this is an elbow here so here's the elbow joint and we extend out normally most people have a almost a 180 degree range of motion here but if you go past that so here would be your normal stopping point and I know that's not exactly a 180 because it's not a straight line but but if you go past that range of motion here that's our range of motion then you've hyperextended it and that would be a sprain so outside the normal range of motion of motion you've exceeded it somehow and then uh, this happens a lot to like the most common ones are knee and ankle and the knee is a hinge joint I mean it's a fairly flexible I mean stable joint and stable joints tend not to be injured as much but the reason the knee is injured so much is you have so much weight bearing down on it and so you twisting and moving and all that extra weight the knee and ankle injuries are probably the most common you would think it would be the shoulder girdle so like here's a person here there's my little stick figure so the, the shoulder girdle here has a, gr a high range of motion, but anytime you have a lot of flexibility in a joint, it tends to be unstable. So it tends to be prone to injury. So the hip joint here is a ball and socket, shoulder girdle is a ball and socket joint, and you would think that they would be more prone to injury, but since you have all this weight down here on this hinge joint of the knee, even though it's a fairly stable joint, it's not really that flexible. It only goes in, you know, really one direction or two directions, this way and that way. Um, but because all the weight's bearing down on it, you tend to get it injured more. So to treat a sprain, again, use the Ross principle. Rest, ice, compress, elevate. About 20 minutes for the ice and for the compression about three to four hours would be optimal and that's really to control swelling All right, let's scroll up here let's do strains and again people get sprains and strains confused this is a muscle pull commonly known as a muscle pull um, you have a lot of you have degrees of strains up to three degrees so first degree not so bad just some minor pain second degree a lot more pain maybe a little bit of bruising and then um, third degree you'll see a lot of internal bleeding a lot of bruising associated with it and a lot of pain so you've torn the muscle fibers so the muscle fibers get torn and oops, so you tear them tear muscle fibers and that's where all the internal bleeding comes from and for the care for a strain it is re the RAS principle rest, ice, compress, elevate and it's pretty simple you just um, apply ice to help r alleviate some swelling and pain you rest it try not to use it too much you compress it again to help alleviate swelling elevation if you need to improve some of the circulation or if you get a lot of swelling um, contusions I'm having to speed up here because I'm running out of time it's essentially a muscle bruise so let's say you get hit by a baseball or somebody accidentally hits you with the bat, you're probably going to get a bruise from that, and that would be a contusion. 